good morning. My name is Paddy Connolly. I'm CEO of Inclusion in Ireland. You're all very welcome here this morning. I understand the Minister's going to join us as soon as he can. He had uh, another commitment this morning, but he, he'll appear in at some stage when he, when he can get out to the other meeting he's attending. So we're going to continue on anyway. Um, I just want to thank a couple of people. Thank you all for attending. I met a group of parents in, in uh, Limerick where there's a lot of frustration that there's, there's, there's only one service that they can access and many of them want to do something different, more bespoke for their family members. Um, and as part of that conversation, uh, I was telling them there was a commitment in the programme for government for a task force on personalised budgets within the first three months of the lifetime of the government. So we discussed the prospect of having a seminar like this for 20 or 30 people, or 40 even, if we were lucky. And uh, over a period of a week and a half, two weeks, we grew to 176 people. So that gives you an indication of the demand and expectation around uh, more choice and control for people that they would have a, a personalised budget that they could work with either through a broker, through directly themselves, or working with, with another service provider. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a growing demand for this. It's an important seminar. I'd particularly like to thank people who came at short notice. Um, family members who are speaking today, uh, who I know made, have made arrangements for family members at short notice to come up and many of you as well, but also our, our colleagues from the UK, uh, Simon Duffy and Julie, thank you very much for coming at very short notice. Uh, Porik, appreciate you coming over. Rachel, thank you for coming up again at short notice. To speak today, Martin, Ryan, uh, Avril, and Peter. Have everyone? Faithful in the use of our name. Thanks very much. So, um, <coughs> I'm going to introduce Pat Clark. I also want to thank Pat Clark and the Board of Down St. Martin and staff for coming in together with us on this at very short notice also. And Pat's going to make uh, the opening remarks. One last thing. The event is being recorded. If for some reason you don't want your face on video, you need to let us know. And um, I'd just like to thank Neve and Thomas who are doing the recording today. Um, and as I say, just make them aware if you don't if you don't want your, your face covered on video today. Because it will go up on the Inclusion Ireland website and various other uh, Dancing to Marlin websites, various other forums. So, uh, Pat. Uh, thank you, Paddy. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very welcome. You're all very welcome. And great to see such numbers, but it's also worrying that there are so many people here in, in many respects. Um, welcome to this timely and very important meeting. I also want to thank Paddy and Inclusion Ireland for this joint collaboration in facilitating this uh, meeting, and I trust you will all be more enlightened and better informed about this issue when we finish early in the afternoon. And I'm sure that the Minister, when he, when he gets here, will take on board the discussions and outcomes from today's session. Currently, almost three quarters of the disability funding is spent on residential and adult daycare services. But however, there's been a very tenuous link, if any, between the funding levels and outcomes for people with disabilities. And funding levels are generally based on the previous year's outturn with some minor adjustments. But there is no audit of outcomes for service users. And look, we all know about the one size fits all and this is what we offer, take it or leave it syndrome, and the service that is on offer. In terms of in, in implementing individualized support services for people with disabilities in Ireland, it's supposed to be, Ireland is supposed to be, have the late mover advantage, and should have benefited from the accumulated knowledge of those countries uh, and those places that have previously gone down this route and learned from their mistakes. However, for late mover, read no mover. There has been no a gross lack of policy integration at many levels over the past number of years. And it is to the shame of the previous governments, and hopefully not this one, that this has occurred. We will be asking that a clear rollout of this policy be effected immediately, and asserting that further delay is not acceptable. We need to vacate the vested interest that prolongs the one-size-fits-all model, and aiming at the lowest common denominator when it comes to the deliveries of services for people with disabilities. I've been in, on a journey with my son, and I, like many parents and people with disabilities, can attest to the frustration and anger that we encounter along the way. As Ireland moves at a snail's pace towards the ratification of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, we have been assured that Ireland will not ratify 
a, the Convention until it can guarantee its implementation of the Convention. So it is absolutely vital that people with disabilities are accommodated with personal budgets so that they can exercise their own will and preferences and make the choices that they need and are entitled to make in the running of their own daily lives. So with this, I open the conference and I look forward to hearing what all the speakers have to say later as, as the day, morning progresses. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Pat. So I'm going to introduce Porrick Fleming. Porrick is a PhD candidate on the Structured Population and Health Services Research Education Sphere, for short. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Porrick is based in the Psychology Department at NUI Manute. He spent 10 years working in health and social research. His thesis is concerned with the development and implementation of personal budgets. Porrick, really appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to um, thank Inclusion Ireland for actually inviting me along. I'm, I'm delighted and honoured to be asked to, to open um, the seminar this morning with this session. Um, I'm based in the Mental Health and Social Research Unit at Maynooth University. I've been carrying out an evaluation of uh, there were four pilot projects looking at personal budgets for people here in Ireland, and I was evaluating those four pilot the research that was looking at international evidence. Um, so I've just been asked to come along to kind of get, open the session and, and talk about what personal budgets are and what they look like and, and what it all means. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to, to, to bring you along a, a journey over the next few minutes. So individualised funding is what I would term or use the term and that's also it's more kind of internationally used um, but it's really essentially personal budgets that we're talking about. So. Over the last um, three years, when I've been doing my work, there have been three uh, terms that I've come across being used here in Ireland. The first, direct payment, and as the name suggests there, a direct payment is an amount of money that is provided directly to the individual so that they and their support network can decide how that money gets spent to meet their needs. Um, the, another term that I came across was independent support broker. And similarly, there's an amount of money that's allocated to an individual, but in this